Jackie Cash and Lori Kill Martin. Jackie Cash and Lori Kill Martin. It's the Jackie and Lori Show. The Jackie and Lori Show. It's the Jackie and Lori Show. The Jackie and Lori Show. One. No. One. Wow, Jackie, spring it alive, Jackie and Lori on me, potentially. <laughs> well, and here it is. We also have to record a Max Fun. Hi, Lori Kilmartin. How are you? Yeah. I'm <laughs> Are you overwhelmed? I'm, I'm overwhelmed and uh, you've just yes. put another log in the fire. Well, that's what I'm here. It's uh I had a guy explain to me how pistons worked in a car. A lot of gasoline talk, air intake, uh things go on fire, mm-hmm. uh then there's cylinders. Uh it's been explained to me before. Did your car break down? No, his mother's car did. And so I was the recipient of that information. And Who, I, why were you near this person? Uh, he is my mother-in-law's neighbor. A very nice okay. guy. Got it. Who uh, is also um, slightly insane. But other than that, uh, he's been very nice to my mother-in-law. And is your mother-in-law, she still had, had headed down here? <laughs> She is not. Uh, okay. We don't know what she, was happening, but she had, uh, you know, she had some inner ear thing. Okay. Uh, where she was super on, she was super on uh, vertigo y. Yeah. So Andy was supposed to come up to a San Francisco punchline and hang mm-hmm. out with me. Mm-hmm. Instead, he had to go up there. And then he came on Saturday. Nice. And then we drove back to his mom's house on Sunday. Wait, so you have a hoodie from the yeah. punchline? Yeah. I want one. You didn't get a hoodie from No. Me? Oh. You just gotta ask. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm. I will have been at the Sacramento punchline. Maybe they have them too. Yeah. And a lot of people um, were talking you up. Oh, really? People, yeah. The punchline. You are celebrated as a person of note. <laughs> and uh, and I I learned that that Sunday night showcase at the punchline oh, in San Francisco. Oh, it's brutal. Is not called an open mic. Oh no! <laughs> you you have to hang for like six months. Now, a year, I'm told. A year? One year before you go up. Fuck. Phil, the guy who hosted. Phil Griffiths. Phil Griffiths. Yeah, he's uh, great. He explained how his wife was like, so if you hang out for a year, you'll get booked there? And he's like, no. <laughs> no, I'll get a showcase. You Three minutes. explain it. And then she you was can't like, so it. if you, th- so once you get that showcase, then you'll work there? And he's like, no, then I'll be allowed to do showcases maybe every three months. And then she's like, and then you'll get work? And he said, Maybe. Oh my I god! Said, so then you'll make money. It's like, no, maybe, no. honey. There's no money in this. There's no money in this. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That there's no money you in have comedy. In love I should have comedian. told you that 20 years ago. I there's know. no money in comedy. Well, he and he is only he started, and this is, I believe, he said he was seven years in. Yeah, yeah. So um, he's very funny. No, yeah, he was great. Actually, it was a great show. Yeah, it was a uh, Corinda. Yes, Starbins, our, right? Who was our last week comic of the week mm-hmm. in? preparation she lives here now she okay. lives down here now okay and she was wonderful and i got to meet her girlfriend and she uh, did very well and i did very well and phil did very well and the audiences were a delight cool so did you have good crowds full full houses mostly mostly yeah. full uh michelle wolf was also playing in town she uh took the wednesday and the sunday okay uh <laughs> two shows each night so what's she doing between Cobbs. Oh. also sold out oh my god a lot of comedy yeah she could have just done a theater one night but she she might be working on a, her new album as yeah, well she's a stand-up man well she was just grinding it out yeah she must have had something to do so yeah the thing is is she could have done a ten thousand you know a ten thousand uh you know like three one thousand right seat, uh shows I mean, I I can't even imagine being at her level now. But but I would I would imagine that if she's working on a new hour, she, she doesn't want to do a theater and charge people fifty dollars to see newer stuff where she could you know. No, no, I th- I think uh, I don't. Th- I mean, that might that would be very nice of her to think that she doesn't want to charge fifty dollars for the to see her. But I would think she would want to do oh, yeah, nine just, shows. Yeah, for sure, for not, sure. Nine yeah. one hour shows. I mean, Chappelle just does nine hours, and then he does nine <laughs> one hour shows in a row, uh-huh. and then he's worked on it as well. And yeah. then people just hang out. <sighs> oh Everyone's gosh, got the a method. Already begun, dude. <laughs> so. I am exhausted. It's Monday night. I yeah. worked a full day. I yeah. I I, I, I you- feel like I haven't slept since New Year's Eve. Really? And uh, I had two sets tonight. And um, Did you? Where'd you go? 
I was at Flappers, and nice. then I ran over to the kibbutz room at oh, okay. Cantor's Deli. Because there were three people there, three girl Liter- drunks. Literally you- three. Yeah. But then the the bar is always a good good crowd. <laughs> those are... Uh, so there were three people sitting in those chairs, and then there was people at the bar? But you know what? Okay. There were more people were welcome to sit in the chairs if they wanted to. Yes, they were. <laughs> I have but done it was that fun. Room a couple I mean, of times. it's a fun room, and right, and there's parking, so it's fun. oh, there's plenty of parking, and mm-hmm. I bought four croissants on the way out because it's Cantor's Deli, and they're open 24 hours a day, and they sell, they have pastries and goods 24 seven. They don't run out of shit like these other places do at noon around here. Is there places running out of food? Around yeah, where you live, croissants. The croissants I like. Yeah, they run out. They they sell them till like 10 in the morning, and then they're like, oh, we're out. Gonna, well, you I'm, have an oven. Can't you make more? No, no, yes. no, no, no. Okay. I have a, a controversial statement that I'd like to make about Cantor's. I don't like it. Why? I've never enjoyed their food and their coffee is terrible. And mm. you might not. I don't think you're a coffee drinker. Are you really? Oh, yes. Okay. But have I, you tried I, their coffee? No, because I usually go there at night. So I just mm. get croissants to okay. heat up in the morning. Fair enough. Uh, but the croissants are good? Because I don't think I've ever had their pastries. Yeah, they're it's they're fine. The, you know the deli. My favorite deli uh, is uh, Uncle Bernie's. Where's that? Encino. Oh, I've never been. Yeah, it is literally at any time of the day or night. There's uh, like a mahjong. <laughs> like oh, there, really? there's a table full of old ladies playing either cards like yeah. knuckle or mahjong, eating. You know. Yeah croissants or whatever because they got you know they got cookies and they have coffee and their coffee's great uncle bernie's do you ever go to katz's on uh houston in yeah. the lower east side yeah did you order a pastrami sandwich yeah it was uh that you know and it was it's six inches high yeah it's super and it's tall. all pastrami it's all pastrami it's and shocking some some very thin rye bread yeah i like uh barney greengrass up on the upper west side oh yeah i've actually i've walked by that place a million times and never gone in i should oh, go there next it's time amazing quite honestly i go but it's it's a very expensive and they yeah. only take cash and um and there's uh probably 20 tables total the uh, two times ago when i was there francis mcdormand was there Really? It was kind of exciting. Wow. And I recognized her, which was even more exciting. Yeah, I'm sure. Last night. I'm sure, she, she was excited. She seems like a lady that wants to be talked to. So who was in the marriage story? Uh, a guy. Adam Driver. Adam and, Driver, who was Kylo Ren. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Allegedly, I, I wouldn't know. Uh, right. Well, I saw him last night at the <laughs> at the Oscars, right, on, on the TV. Right. And um, Well, that's not an exclusive sighting, Jackie. Everyone well, kind of saw my him My mother-in-law there. thought he was uh, Loki. The guy who played Loki. And I thought he was Keanu Reeves. So wow. and Andy actually posted on Facebook because of how bad the, we both were. <laughs> he was like, wow, I'm sitting between some real, real aficionados of the industry over here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you watch the thing with the thing? What? The TV with the movies and the what? awards? The Oscars. The Oscars. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Did you watch you it? You know, you're... You're you're attacking me for being tired. I'm so, oh I'm ridiculous. You're talking tired. around words. Oh, I know. So you drove back. I did not watch the Oscars because I just set a flappers on Sunday night, and uh, also um, I just didn't feel like streaming. No one in my house wanted to watch, and I just watched clips the next day. I trust oh, um, you sites like the Daily Beast, etc., to pick out the good clips for me to watch. Uh, yeah, the good clips are always the way to go. We just watched because uh, we were at Andy's mom's house, and she has this sixty-five inch television with cable, like it's nineteen, you know, ninety-nine. And oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And then we watched literally something called Instinct, and then several co- episodes of uh, NCIS because uh, on a sixty-five inch. Yeah, nice. Yeah. This is it was like being in the murder. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh yeah so um i don't know and then oh and then i saw too many pictures today on instagram of comedians at the vanity fair party i take it anyone can get into the vanity fair party now i saw Marin with mark with brad pitt now that made sense because he interviewed him but uh, were there more stand-ups there yeah like Patton was there and oh, well that makes and, sense and uh hardwick was there okay and they were all I mean, they're all comics yeah but they're all famous but uh, but are they famous enough? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, for sure. Or has the party gone downhill? 
We don't know. Wow. Way to insult your friends, Jackie. <laughs> I know. I love all three of those guys. <laughs> I even love Chris Hardwick, even though he uh, there was trouble. Uh, <laughs> so. There's always trouble. Today, Sometimes there's trouble. Yeah. Neil Brennan was trouble. There, someone, oh. someone, <laughs> he took a stand. He didn't like Joker <laughs> and he didn't like Parasite. And then he went. <laughs> <laughs> he doubled down. He doubled down <laughs> on what might be an opinion you don't have to double down on. But he's a stubborn guy and he right. went all in and he kept tweeting and tweeting. <laughs> and the person he was tweeting against or with, you know, has a, her own uh, army of defenders. And then okay. it was like, I was like, what the fuck's going on? Did he get, sh- did, was he... Did, did it all go, did he get doxxed? No, they- no, no, no. It, it was, uh, <laughs> did it he's, get truly- he's, he is uh, hard and firm where he is, right. and that's that. And um, and and maybe women trolls don't dox you, right? Well, the other person wasn't trolling. It was it was j- it was it an was intellectual an, an, argument, con- and I she felt I felt like she made a lot more sense than he did. But who cares? I mean, whatever. <laughs> an excellent uh, point. <laughs> I think that really sums it up. But um, it's somebody somebody's tweet somebody's tweet um and i don't know whose it is but i've seen it a few times come up whenever this is situation like this it's like every day on twitter somebody's it and your job is not to be it have you seen that one i have not so today neil brennan was it (laughs) (laughs) and it was just (laughs) interesting to watch unfold and who who knew that twitter was actually a a really elaborate game of tag (laughs) but it's also like okay so if i'm ever ever it like one thing you can do is pivot and go, I'm sorry. Oops. You know oh, what? Right, right. I made a mistake. My error. Something you can do that. And right. then you can, you can throw heat on to the next person who's it. You can actually <laughs> just bow out oh, if you want, yeah. or maybe you want, if you're feeling feisty and you want to fight and hold your ground and don't want to yeah. concede defeat, who knows? I don't know. You know, comics when they, Comics like to fight. It's a fun thing to fight. Sometimes we fight for things we don't believe in because we feel like being ordinary. Gonna, gonna take that stand. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't have, uh, I don't have, I don't, I, I, I don't think I have that. It just is, uh, I think I have so much rage inside of me that that's if grounded I were, in something. There's no point in taking a position on something if, you if don't I believe in. If I take a in. position on any number of things, like right. every time I've taken a position where, uh, the rage has come out, I've always regretted it. Yeah. So I have to, and possibly if I, if I, if I fought more useless fights more often, I might bleed <laughs> that off. We don't know. We don't know. Right. Uh huh. So I got an email today from a club owner. Right. You sent it to me, and I was, I thought it was going to be a quick email, and it was several paragraphs. So I was like, I got to put this one on ice because okay, I was so about I'll, to go up. All he, this so was I didn't, a I didn't see the whole thing. He's one of the good ones, you guys. Yes. And, uh, yes. <laughs> he is. And, uh, but he had had a conversation about what we were talking about how, uh, just sort of the booking of, the, there being a lot of dudes being booked who can't fill the room. Yeah. And not a lot of women who can't fill the room. Sent, can't, only women who can sell out the room are being, right, right, uh, right. booked at some clubs. And he has his theory on that was that, um, a lot of clubs, especially A clubs, uh, book from agents and agents send them rosters and the rosters are heavy with straight white guys. Mm-hmm. And so you have to, it's, he's like, there's no excuse for it, but, uh, what, what do I think of that theory? And I, so it takes some of the onus off of the club owners and he wasn't looking to take that off of them. Yeah. He, he was saying, you know, obviously he's saying to, this is what he gets offered all the time. Yeah. He, so he has to go out of his way to find women to, yeah, because they're not being wrapped by and, and, and right. anything that isn't a straight white guy to some extent. Right. And it made me think about the rosters that a lot of these agencies, you know, like I know these guys, it's almost entirely, Straight white guys. Wow. Yeah. And um, and they just took the time to steal a bunch of people. Yeah. Uh, and all straight white guys. Wow. But and but I do know this too is that um, it's funny uh, because even like if if a straight white guy falls off, th- this guy, I'm just gonna write names. I'm so sorry, you guys. Yeah. Uh, so he he okay. got dropped by his agency, okay. and I think it was them. Okay. So um. And then a club owner. Is he booking himself now? Well, I guess he's booking himself now. Okay. But I know. Um, I had some uh, club owner ask me 
uh, I think I was telling a story about talking to him. Yeah. And um, the club owner said, I love that guy. Whatever happened to that guy? And I was oh like, Oh my God. Uh, he has a website. Uh, <laughs> you just go to oh, no. blank blank.com and I'm sure there's a contact the, way to. The only people in the world that are not difficult to find are comedians. Oh, so We're easy. on so many fucking platforms. There's right. no excuse for not finding us. Right. right. If you want to DM somebody, Oh my God. Uh, even I would get booked. Like I. You know, if Caroline from Caroline's text messaged me, I don't usually book myself via text message. Yeah. Cause I, I fear forgetting. Right. I would, I would double, triple check it if Caroline herself texted me. And I, think, I don't uh, think she does that. I think, uh, no, I don't think that's Louis her. I, th- I think does? that uh, we're, yeah, I think that yeah. she's above that at this, or she's, that's, uh, she's delegated. She's that. being Caroline. Yeah. She's being the name of the club. Yeah. Anyway, but so what I did was I hooked up. Um, essentially it was this guy. And so what I did was I just, I emailed. I don't know that guy or I can't yeah, read you your do. writing. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, so I literally, I just, I sent an email to both of them and said, you gentlemen wish to work together. <laughs> Why don't you do it? And I don't, I don't do, I mean, I get a lot of requests for that. Mm-hmm. You know, it was, um, I tell you that Chad Daniels entered the short list of people that, uh, that other people were trying to get in touch with. Oh, he's the, he's a guy that people email you to get in touch yes. with. There's you, there's uh Maria Bamford and right. now Chad Daniels. Wow. And, uh, it was my first Chad Daniels. Hey, could you hook me up with you? And he was like, and it was because of this show there. Uh, he said, no, I, I understand you really like him. And, um, and no one had ever asked me. And so I literally called Chad and I said, Hey, you're on a short list of people <laughs> <laughs> that I'm booking now. Oh and, my God. <laughs> I, I had a, a, and uh, you know what? First of I, I, I had this situation happen where this is fine. And, and I don't blame anyone. Cause yeah. so I was filling in for a famous comic, right? Okay. Who had to cancel. So, um, just around here in LA. In a, in a little show. And so, you know, Hey, so-and-so canceled. Can you do the spot? Yeah, okay, sure. Yeah. So then, then they said, Hey, if you want to FaceTime with this person while you're on stage so that they could talk to their fans. <laughs> right. And that's right. when I was like, Oh, I don't want to do that. No, no, I don't want to use. Why, want, why would you want to use any of your set right. to get the fa- famous person that they, yes. And just because you know, famous people, I guess, or famous. Well, I don't even know if I know this person. And I don't FaceTime anyone any, like I would well, hold the so camera wrong. Right. Yeah. I don't FaceTime my son. I was going to say, are you FaceTiming your I don't want to look or- at people's faces. <laughs> That's number one. I don't want to look at my face. Okay. Um, oh. so I polite, I said, uh, I don't know if I could do that. And if you want to, if you want to book someone else who can, that's oh, fine okay. with me. I, I volunteered Ooh, to pull out. There you go. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, you know, I'm just here for, to try and work on my shit. And then they were like, Oh yeah, that's fine. They just asked, which I, you know, that's, you can ask. It's an ask. Everybody's, everybody is just, I mean, to some extent, if you don't ask, you're not going to Oh, it'll never happen. And they thought it might be, they thought their, the fans would be disappointed. Right. And they didn't want to, you know, it's hard to produce a show. And so you say, so-and-so is going to be there and they're not there. Then maybe they don't come out the next time. Right. So I I understood the, the entire thing. And at the same time, I didn't want to (laughs) help. Right. Because I mean, there's, there's so much to this, the job that you're sitting in. Right. I mean, of the three jobs you have, but of the stand up comedy job, that job itself has so many irons in the fire. So you're like, I can't also run these other people's careers. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. fair enough. Yes. Yeah. Um, But one day, mm -hmm. will you FaceTime Lily Tomlin with me? No, I'm kidding. (laughs) Lily Tomlin hasn't been doing stand-up lately. Ever. She's not a stand-up. So people, please... Stop having pictures of her in your comedy club. I yes. Like I mean, she's a great performer, a great Very storyteller. Funny. Yes. Right. She did a storytelling show, right? Yeah. Is that's that different. It's solo? a different art form. It's not right. stand up. You're not in a club. And stand up. Broadway, you're talking over waitresses. You're talking over a check <laughs> drop. That's a fucking stand up. Everything else is storytelling. Stop it. You know, the uh, here's where, here's what I liked about the punchline many mm-hmm. things uh the building i did not enjoy uh did you did you see any human shit 
I didn't. What I did was I was lost every night trying to get <laughs> into the building. Aww. I couldn't get Lyft to drop me off at the right place. They moved the hotel. It's no longer the one that's two oh, blocks no, away. Oh, no, it's no more club quarters? No more club quarters. It's this thing over by Chinatown. It was Chinatown's uh, parade this weekend. <laughs> busy that's a busy time of the year. oh yes yeah. the lunar new year right yeah i was 45 minutes late for the dinner i was having before oh, the show right so um with some friends how's the I hotel though with. it's a very nice hotel um, i went in of course and i wanted a room with a bathtub and they said we have them but they're facing the street and you don't want to take a room facing the street and i said but i really want the bathtub and the guy goes i literally moved two people last night from, oh, from bathtub rooms. Okay. And you just, you don't. And I was like, I'm going to, cause here's, here's, I don't shower. I only bathe. And so okay. whenever I shower, I was like, oh, this is an excuse to sit on the floor of something and cry. And while <laughs> rain falls on my head. <laughs> okay. I mean, couldn't you cry in the bathtub as well? I could, except for I don't ever do it. Cause I'm so happy to be in a bathtub. I miss having a bathtub. I fucking love it. I took out the bathtub here to accommodate at least three people <laughs> skin and bone. Yes. yes. And, uh, I do yeah. miss soaking in a tub. I'm going to ask uh, your guy who helped with all your yard yeah. mm-hmm. uh, to help me with my garden. I want to, okay. I want to, um, he wouldn't do our gutters. We needed to have our gutters replaced around yeah. the house. And he was like, I need the work. But what I'm telling you is I wouldn't do it as well as you got to find somebody. He said, what you're looking for is seamless gutters. And I was like, do you have a guy? And he goes, no, but you want seamless gutters. <laughs> I can put up less good gutters for the same amount of money. I need the work. But what I'm saying is you uh, don't want to do it. And I said, he's a good guy. He's a really good guy. Yeah. Because uh, he uh, clearly needs the work, mm-hmm. but uh, doesn't want to do subpar work. For yeah, yeah. Right. So good um, for him. Yeah. No, he's I, very happy. Mm-hmm. Uh, as happy as I get. Is which that, isn't at all right there's trouble uh, uh are you on the road let's see this is the 10th is that what i what, this what is, did i this will be the 17th thank god That's and i will be in oh. so right now i'll be on a well wait this drops in the morning i'll the be Monday. flying home from sacramento i'll have a short pit stop and then i'll be getting right back on a plane oh my gosh that's right two southwest flights in a row that's to right. minneapolis but i'll i'm i'm so is it wait, is it snowing there? Um, it's going I'm there I'm going there this weekend for um my niece's bat mitzvah. Okay. And why don't you just stay a couple extra days and we'll do a a, a be, uh well you're I'm flying out on Monday. Okay. But uh, you're willing to come back on Saturday to do a, a Jackie if, and Lori in yeah, the if afternoon? Yeah, if, if Lewis will say that I can come back on the twenty second to do a Jackie and Lori, I'll come back. You think we can fill it with no would they Guys, notice? if you're near Minneapolis, right? We will we'll let you know on Twitter, yeah, and we'll let you know in Patreon or whatever. Right. Uh, but we might be doing a live Jackie and Lori in the afternoon on the Saturday of the twenty second. Cool. It could happen, and we will see. Mm. Um. So, but yeah, because I, uh, I don't know. I was just thinking because otherwise we're going to have to record a bunch of different shows. Oh my god! Because we we have stuff that needs. I think we. Are supposed to turn in whatever. Let's, it's going to be shit's going to be late, and people have to deal. And we're going to have to just crank out some. Stuff we're doing as much as we can. Yes, we are. Somebody else invited us on their podcast, and I was like, "I'm putting my foot down. Absolutely <laughs> not. If we, if you and I can find an hour together, we're not recording someone else's podcast. <laughs> right? Have us on separately somehow. Why don't, why don't you edit it together? Yeah. And uh, and oh, by the way, can you do that forever? <laughs> and uh, are, sorry, wait, are you going up tomorrow, Tuesday? Uh. Am I going out any place? Yeah, are you going out tomorrow to do sets? Uh, I don't know. I don't have anything at the moment, but uh, I put in for... Oh, did you? Because I uh, I put in and I didn't get anything this week, uh, but I leave on Thursday to go to Minnesota. Yeah. Um, I have so something I on just Thursday. Have... Oh, you have something on... Okay. Yeah. Because... Um, oh, you Remember thinking... I was thinking about coming and hanging out with you and just sort of recording the Max Fun episode at a gig. Right. And maybe talking to whatever comics are there going, yeah. look, it's a rare <laughs> right, right, right. guest moment. Yeah. And, um, but I don't, but I don't have anything. I don't have anything. I, I think in town I'm doing, uh, well, Maria's going to run her hour mm-hmm. with probably her new 10 or 12 at Flappers on the 20th. Oh. And I'm just going to feature for that. 
And uh, so that's the that's 20th fun. of this month. That'll be super fun. But I'll be in uh, Minneapolis. Yeah, you'll be gone. Mm-hmm. But then, um, and then I'm doing the hot tub anniversary show. On oh, Monday, cool. On the 24th. But the the other, oh, I, t- oh, I remember I asked you what I should do about the benefit versus, because Maria's going to Raleigh, North Carolina. Right. And she wanted me to feature for it. My club. Like Williams. Good nights. The one that he Oh, the one that won't work me? Yeah, the one that won't work me. Yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah, the one that won't work us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but Maria's doing it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was going to. Oh, they work f- Maria. Okay. Yeah, they work Maria. Oh, okay. really? So they work a woman who's at a TV show on Amazon? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, yeah. nice. I believe Michelle Wolf also works there. Wow. Anyway, that's cool. I know. So they're nice. just booking your local run of the mill female headliners? Right, right. Just, sure. uh, just you know. Uh, and guys have been doing comedy for two years. Great. <laughs> good, 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 good. <laughs> Good, good, good. Um, right. And, uh, but I, uh, so I wanted to go mm-hmm. and I don't know, consistently reinvent the wheel, <laughs> uh, at, with the helium and, and show them that I'm likable and I'm, I'm, I can do the and job. Gosh darn and, it. And, yes. And gosh darn it. And anyway, but I can't do it because I already said I would do this corporate. Yeah. That, that private benefit. In Palm Springs. It's a Palm fun Springs. little gig. And it's a fun. And, and they put you up overnight in Palm Springs. Right. Which I've never wanted to go to in my life. Do but, it's gorgeous. What is it? It's just a desert town. It's a desert town. There's great architecture. Everyone is attractive. They're, they're the most attractive gay men I've ever seen. And I just enjoyed watching them walk. They're in their shorts. (laughs) They're wearing ice cream flavored, uh, (laughs) you know, ice, you know, they're all wearing like green and pink and baby blue and it all looks good on them because they're tan and attractive. (laughs) And it's, there's, it's, it's nice to watch and there's no sexual thing going on. It's just like, wow, that's a good looking human being. Well done, sir. It's, yeah, well played. Uh, did you see, uh, (laughs) Deborah D. Giovanni is on a gay cruise? Oh, is she? Yeah, yeah. Because she. I saw. I saw the picture of her near water, but I wasn't sure. (laughs) I didn't know it was a gay cruise, right? Okay, and um, because she posted some picture of her next door neighbor's uh, door Uh had some sign about um, one person's a top, one person's a bottom. They're looking for some nasty sex. Sign up below. And what? Yeah, yeah. Gay uh, gay male cruises, I guess. Oh my god, the hook. They're (laughs) they're sign up below. Oh my god! Yeah, wow. Um, so that sounds like a lot. But I wonder. That's probably not happening on the coronavirus cruise, and it may not be happening in Palm Springs, but it may be. <laughs> um, uh, but I've been to Palm Springs. It just it feels like a sort of Santa Barbara, but no water. Is that? But there used to be water. They had there water. There used to be a. Wasn't there a lake? You know, I don't know, but they have faucets. I took a shower. <laughs> they have water. Okay, shit's coming out of hoses. And pipes. Don't worry about right. it. You'll well, be fine for a day. You'll I'm, have water. No, it'll be lovely. And um, but the yeah, and they don't you love the desert? The yeah, don't you love so, the desert? I don't mind the desert. It's it's just beautiful. I like um. It's interesting about the outdoors. Is I like all of it. Yeah, uh, but I don't want to be out almost in any of it. <laughs> like I just kind of I wouldn't. You mind. prove of it from a distance. My favorite thing to do outdoors in a in a in an exciting fashion. Mm-hmm. I enjoy horseback riding. Really? Yes. And unfortunately, not in L.A. because you end up horseback riding next to an aqueduct on a very, very old horse uh, that just plods that one way yeah. and plods back. The There's other like way. an equestrian center in Burbank. It's got right, some I've old horse. Oh, okay. It's got a bunch of old. Horses. Oh, I'm sorry. I've I didn't know who I was talking to. And it's not. And it's exactly the wrong thing. OK. But uh, Andy for my birthday once took me. I think it was up to Santa Barbara to go horseback. Riding. Oh, neat. It was lovely. And it was sort of in sort of this d- d- deserty kind of arid kind of uh, hills. You know what I think of it. when I think of horseback riding? What? Two words. Christopher Reeve. Oh. Yeah. He, that's how it happened. <laughs> what? Oh, did he die on a horse? No. he. Christopher Reeve was paralyzed from the neck down. On a, uh, falling off a horse. Yeah. He was a horseback rider. Yeah. You know what people do all the time? They what? drown. <laughs> they drown in swimming. Not pools. in a pool with lifeguards nearby. I don't. You think I, I don't swim in this pool ever? Because you know there's no one around to save then, me. Then, then here's the. Um, <laughs> do you use this pool? No, I hate it. That's I hate it. That's why you have to have pool parties. 
Yeah, I, I guess I, I. So someone will use it. Yeah, yes, it's what, not long enough. It's not like I would never lap swim in this. Right, it's hard because it's not shaped. It's in the right shape. For maybe it. if uh, there was a fire, I would use that water to put the fire out. So that's a good use for it. But other than that, it's just a body of water to look at. I love looking at water. I okay. think being around the studies have shown being around water cheers people up. Oh, good. But you know, oh, just imagine. Did I. You- I could easily have, why can't I have a bathtub out there instead of this pool? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a hot tub? No. To this damn no. Well, this is a, a pool guy. from the 40s. Okay. Or the 60s. Either would, way. Would, would the guy put it a, a hot tub on one side of it? Yeah. Guess what? I'd have to write a check for $40,000. Oh, shit. Yeah. All right. Shit so, like that's expensive. So this is the other, I'm going to finish my story over here. Okay. This is the other thing I like to do outdoors. Okay. Which is, uh, you're finish not going to approve of this either. Okay. Uh, sailing. That's I like fine. To go sailing. That's fine. It's. Uh, I mean, do you wear a life jacket? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. So you, you're doing all you can. I'm doing right, and I'm usually not the one sailing because mm. I don't know how to sail. Right. But I like to be on a sailboat. Yeah, that's fine. And um, and and you can like I went to Catalina. We chartered. Uh, you 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 could uh be part of a, a tiny group on a sailboat. Uh-huh. They would take you to a place where you could go paddle boarding and swimming and no snorkeling oh, if you wanted. I gotta and do that gorgeous. with my kid. You gotta do that with your kid. And Catalina is kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Did I they have buffalo wanted, or bison or they something. Have bison. There? On okay. half of it we didn't go there, but you can you can also uh, sign up for like a Jeep excursion where they take you on a Jeep to go look at bison. Oh cool. <laughs> which he might also enjoy. And, um, is there a comedy would. club there? There uh, was, but I don't think there is anymore. But what a waste of an island. Exactly that. Um, yeah. Oh, no, but I saw Southwest goes to Hawaii now, so I want to do comedy in Hawaii. Did that just start? Yeah. Do they stop over in the uh, Atlantic Ocean just out of habit? Why? Do they do a layover? Because they can't seem to fly any place directly. <laughs> um, <laughs> they just stop on water. and uh, I don't. I don't know. Here, here's what I want to do. I want to take what? a break. I didn't even finish that riff. I just went and uh, and I just let it hang. Yeah, let me just uh, make a note for a max fun break. Oh, wait, 31? Yep. Heck yeah. Hey, you've reached Dr. Game Show. Leave your message after the beep. Dr. Game Show is my favorite podcast and the only podcast my parents let me listen to because I'm 12. But even old people love this show. Basically, you call in, play games, and have fun. If you win a game, a baby will send you a magnet in the mail. I have so many magnets and put them all over my locker, and pretty much everyone at school is jealous because they are very cool custom magnets, and it also means that I'm really good at winning games. And they even let me practice my record live on the air. <laughs> Listening to this show is like going to a real doctor, but pretty much kind of better. Dr. Game Show rocks. Listen to Dr. Game Show on Maximum Fun. New episodes every other Wednesday. And now we're back. Do the comic of the week. Oh, my God. So this this woman is so funny. Um, her name is Rosebud Baker. Yeah. She she just did a thing for Comedy Central. She did Bill Burr's Ringer's show. Oh. But, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's all about you, Jackie. I know. They didn't even inquire about me. At least you were up for it. I wasn't up for it. You, they mentioned your name, right? No. Oh, okay. No, no. The thing. Well, we were both robbed. We were robbed, but Rosebud Baker wasn't, and she did a good job. She's so funny. Okay, and that's awesome. So, first of all, <laughs> I love you're like rage, rage. Oh, she's so funny. <laughs> Such a nice young woman. So I saw her uh, the clip, the Comedy Central clip. Yeah. It's really funny. Oh, good. It's it's just um, very funny. Uh, she's James Baker's granddaughter. Oh, I have seen that. Clip it's a great clip because right? it's a clip about being James Baker's granddaughter, right? And what and a he monster was a, he is. He, well, I don't think she puts it that way, but uh-huh. he he was the Secretary of State during the Bush administration. The first I'm paraphrase. One. Okay, so um, so so I saw her at the lab, and oh, really? um, she did it. She I'm not going to tell you what the chunk was about. I'll tell you later. Okay, but it, it's about so find her, you guys. Rosebud Baker. It's under yes. Rosebud Baker, by the way. R O S E B U D B A K E R. Yeah, Rosebud just like Baker. how you'd spell it. Yep. So um, it's about a tragedy that happened in her family, a real tragedy. Oof. And it's so well done. And it's it's so hard to talk about something like that. Yeah. A, a, a death. Um, and she she's figured it out. Like she she it's 
she's past the point where she's grieving, right? right. Actively. And um she gets in it very nimbly and and joke, 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 joke. Yep. Really, really great. And then she, you know, parachutes out when she's done to the next thing. That's awesome. And I love it. I love it when when in your act a, a chunk about a death is exactly has the same weight, you know, in your act and to the audience eventually as a chunk about cats. Right. right? It's both like they have jokes that will make you laugh. Yeah. And it, it takes so much um uh practice to get that right. right. And she did it. Yeah. And uh so uh I would just find her. She's really funny. I think she's a Chicago she started in Chicago maybe. Okay. And I think she lives in New York. Okay. Rosebud Baker. Yeah. You guys do it. That uh that's very cool. I um I I remember I wish I could remember her name and I can't remember anything quite honestly these days. Mm-hmm. But um there was a rape chunk that this woman did about her own rape. Wendy Starling? It wasn't. Oh, okay. It Somebody else? A, it was a newer comic, and I okay. think she was from Chicago. Oh. And it was just, it was literally, there was, uh, I think it was early days of it. So, so she it still had a lot of, sort right. of, it had a little bit of emotion in it. Right. That wasn't bad. Right, right, right. It was still very good. Yeah. Because it also had... Like three amazing punchlines. Yeah. And the the last punchline was a button on the story. Oh, nice. So it was perfect. Right. You know, like if you're going to do something that powerful and that, um, yeah. and that long, what can often be an, a kind of a longer story, it better have a pretty good button on the end. Definitely. And I, and I think, um, as long as the audience feels like you're in control, then yeah. you can have, the kind of quavery emotion a little bit. Yeah. You know, they just have to feel like you're not going to lose it. Like they don't have to take care of you. They need to go right to let you continue to be dominant. Yes. And so they can be subs and enjoy your rape story. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Oh my gosh. I had some, there was some comment I did not make today uh, that I was so proud about. And it was a uh, literally just a filthy, filthy statement that I was going to tweet out. And I was like, Oh, you don't want to be it. Politically filthy. Um, yeah. I think it was, it was yeah. in regard to essentially like whim, uh, Cynthia Nixon said something about. Oh, uh, you, I saw some Cynthia Nixon shit from you. It was one tweet that I did not say the next. Uh, thing. Oh, I see. There you go. So, uh, restraint yeah, of you pen were and tongue. Good. A little bit late. Uh, was, uh, <laughs> not entirely. Uh, and it was, you know, there's just so much. We're all just sort of plugging along. And I did. Uh, Everyone wants their candidate to win. Yeah. Yeah. And then the With Super Tuesday's coming up. Great heart. And then yeah. hopefully we will all focus on the, whoever does win. And we will try to. Uh, I don't know, tow this country out of the, from the brink of civil war, you know, fighting right. in the streets. And if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. We all just continue to live and we all just, uh, try to do the best we can for people in front of us. I would sure. have donate another thousand tomorrow. To- yeah. To, to, uh, I want to find another voters' rights thing. So, oh, yeah. To help people to get out. Yeah, the vote. yeah, yeah. Stacey but, Abrams probably, whatever she's doing is think, probably the one to go I to. I feel like I donated it to it last time. It was called okay. Fair Fight. Okay. And, uh, but if it wasn't, maybe the Stacey Abrams one. Yeah. Because, um, I, 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 I have some research as to who to do it to. Right. But, uh, by the way, the definition of that research is asking Darlication. Because <laughs> <laughs> Darlication loves to do some research <laughs> and it's always thorough and she's always cites her, her sources. Yes, she prepares a PDF. It's, uh, there's no PowerPoint, there's no PDF, oh, but okay. there is, there are sources and a secondary source if I were to need one. <laughs> so always good. And, um, <sighs> I am doing Dayton and then, Bloomington back to back. Oh, cool. With three days off in the middle. Oh, nice. And I could either fly to Dayton, fly home, then fly back to Indianapolis, or I could fly to Dayton, fly to Milwaukee, stare at my father yeah, for three days. Do that. And then uh, rent a car. go to Indianapolis. Not going to rent. Not going to rent a car. Everything's six or seven hours. And it'll be oh, in early March. And I don't want oh, yeah. the weather's no. going to be done. Yeah, go see your dad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, oh, the t- challenge coins, by the way. Mm-hmm. 
who knew they would sell? That's amazing. Uh, there, it is amazing that they're selling. And my father was like, are you charging 30 bucks each for them? And I said, no, but you should, because I'm going to sell them to you for 20. <laughs> and, uh, and he was like, and he, he fell for it too. He goes, you're going to, char-. and I said, I'm kidding. I'm not going to charge you for a picture of your face. <laughs> uh, so. Um, well, that's cool. And so you, so, where'd you sell merch at the punchline? There's not a lot of great space to sell stuff there. Right. I, and I didn't figure it out until Saturday to that, uh, instead of having against that back wall, it, it should be more of a, 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 a corner over on the side so that traffic can, so people can just leave. So not in where they, mill. where they buy the tickets, where but they inside buy, the you have sh- to, you have to stay where they buy the tickets. Oh, behind, oh so on, like if, when you walk in, it'll be on your left. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So where were we selling for the first part? I was just on the left, but it was it was two tables that were made long. Okay. And so there was nowhere for people to really mill out of the way and think about getting stuff. Right, right, right. So by Saturday, I had to make sort of a little cubicle, a box out of the two tables. And then that was better. Then there was, then people could. And I sold out of all of the Squish t-shirts. Cool. And all of the smaller sizes of the dad t-shirts. Everybody's very fit in San Francisco. It's uh, the healthiest city in America. That was one of our premises. All yeah. Right. Well, mm-hmm. very nice. Yeah. And then, uh, and then I sold, um, a couple of CDs and I sold, okay. um, all the meat shield pins, which is why I could make another donation. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to bring, I'm flying Southwest. So I get two oh, free good. carry on, two free suitcases, two bags, checked bags. Yeah. So I'm going to bring uh, a lot of books, a lot of books, notebooks. You can and, bring notebooks. Uh, yeah. Good. I'll bring some of our notebooks. See if I can get, uh, get rid of them. And, um, and then tote bags. I, I think, think I have, have a few the, totes left. You have all the totes, I believe. Okay. There I don't might, have any of the totes. Well, that might be one tote. All right. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's cool. I mean, you yeah. know, that's all right. And then I go to New York on the 28th of February for that okay. weekend, for nice. the 29th, and then come back. Um, uh, and then I go back to New York. Uh, have two, I had like a, a weekend and a full hiatus week I was not able to book. I mean, they're still oh, really? open if anyone yeah, yeah. needs me in March. But um, at the moment, I'm going to go to New York for a couple extra days yeah. in March. And Fallouts. Hang out. I'll be... Uh... I huh. hate not. I hate not being able to fill weeks. Yeah, makes me feel. I feel like a loser in within two sets. Like if I have like like I didn't have a set on Friday. Yeah, and by the time I figured out, oh, I'm not going to get this thing I I put in for. It yeah. was too late to like. It was just too late, and then I was like, hey, I'm tired. Can I just take a night off? Yeah. You know, and, and you know, the thing is, is when you take a night off, do you, is it to yourself or are they, do do people still live in your house? People still live in my house. Okay. So it's hard to really just, cause all I want to do is hide in my room. Same. And, um, I want to hide to fly to New York to do that. I know. Uh, Um, so so here, if you have a night off, um, this person right here told me to ask for headlining. Oh, there. Yeah. And. I, I've been thinking nights, about that. Oh, okay. And it paid this for those two nights. What? Yeah. Oh, interesting. There you go. All right. And she got to do 45s. Cool. So. I don't know if they like me to headline. I'm not really sure. I've never asked, but uh, I know. I've never that- asked either, but I feel like if they would have asked me if they. No, she said that uh, she got, she she's, this is the most she's ever gotten. Mm-hmm. And it's because she's been asking for years. And so she's been doing it for years. And this is the most she's ever gotten. Interesting. Yeah. And okay. she always asks them. Okay. So ask that guy. Okay. I'll ask that guy. Okay. What I will too. And um, yeah, I uh, I was really worried I didn't have any work, and now I have so much work. It's all very lovely. Mm-hmm. Um, this week I'm going to decide who I'm doing my new album with. Oh, are you? Yeah. Either way, I uh. I don't know what to do after I feel so oppressed by the idea of this album. Yeah. That uh, well, it's, you want it's made me new minutes before you release this album is what I feel like. No, well, understand. here's the thing. It's made me incredibly depressed because part of me is like, okay, so if I, I'll get this album together and then, uh, then I'll try to get a late night set to promote it. Okay. So I can't get this album together. So I can't do a late night set. So and now I'm like, why am I alive? Like it goes very quickly to <laughs> why am I even right. doing comedy? Like I have chunks that are ready for a late night set. Yeah. And uh, 
so so it's like, oh, well, let's solve the problem by listening to all six of these sets and picking things. And then I go, yeah, I'm going to do that. And then the few times I've had the space to do it, yeah. and Minneapolis would be another time, yep. hopefully, I have just collapsed and not been able to. So I... I, I don't know what to do, but I'm spiraling into a very depressing place because I have... You just got to power through it. I'm so sorry. I mean, and you know that. Because nobody's going... Uh, sadly, no one's going to do it for you. No one cares. Uh, well, people, you could release the... You could let go of the reins and give it to a label and say, you you put it up. And then... I don't know what that would be. To. I don't know what they're up to. Well, right. <laughs> that, <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what they think is a good set, you know? <laughs> Ex- well, and that's the, <laughs> I don't know what they're up to, is exactly the problem. Right. And um, the, speaking of which, uh, let's uh, do another break here. Okay. Because we're at 44. All right. And I say we do a max fun break. Okay. And then we'll be done with it. Okay, great. Hey everyone, it's I, John Hodgman of the Judge John Hodgman Podcast. And I, Elliot Kalin of the Flophouse Podcast. And we've made a whole new podcast, a 12-episode special miniseries called I, Podius, in which we recap, discuss, and explore the very famous 1976 BBC miniseries about ancient Rome called I, Claudius. We've got incredible guests such as Gillian Jacobs, Paul F. Tompkins, as well as star of I, Claudius, Sir Patrick Stewart. And his son, non-sir Daniel Stewart. Don't worry, Dan, you'll get there someday. iPodius is the name of the show. Every week for MaximumFun.org for only 12 weeks. Get them at MaximumFun.org or wherever you get your podcasts. Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah. To let, to let go and to let somebody else pick all of the tracks and, and which set is the best set isn't something you're willing to do. So you, I mean, so then, so the only one who can do it is sadly you. My, so my only option is to kill myself. Is well, what you're telling me. Interesting. Uh, this is a bit of a leap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you've taken a real step in the wrong direction. Just three feet to the right, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I, here's what I want to do. And I want to do it for the Patreon people mm-hmm. is listen to the fucking Nazi set. And put uh, yeah, a put chunk it, of that on put the it Patreon. Up. Put it up. Um, I put the whole fire alarm set up on Patreon. I I want to. Ed- I will edit it and caption it and put it on uh, YouTube. Uh, hopefully. Soon. Oh, I put. Uh, I turned the captions on for the Jackie and Laurie show on YouTube. Oh, so there will be auto captioning. Poorly done. Okay. Voice recognition through YouTube. Okay. But there will be some. Ho- there will be okay. something. All right. And uh, cuz pe- most people aren't listening to it on YouTube anyway. Like 40 people. Okay. We get about 40 hits per interesting. Per episode on YouTube. Why 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 would you listen to a podcast on YouTube? Because uh your work doesn't let you do anything else maybe. Okay. Cuz cuz some things are blocked. Sure. I don't uh, know. Okay. All right. And if there's some captioning, I think I think there's something there. Sure. People like YouTube maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Did, did you get YouTube red? I haven't. Um, no. It, uh, so every night, Marcus, the manager mm-hmm. over at the punchline, okay, uh, yeah. brought me up to Lost in the Woods, a Bye. song from Frozen 2. Oh, okay. And it made me laugh. And it made me, um, it really put me in a pretty good mood. That's nice. Every night. Did you have guest sets? I did. I had uh, NATO did a guest set oh, on yeah. Thursday. He saved the punchline. Lose Glazer. Temporarily. Yes. Yes. Lose Glazer did one. Oh, cool. And Ron did one. Um, oh, Ron Vi? Yeah. Oh, right on. Yeah. So. That's a that's a good crew of uh, San Francisco people. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and then, because first shows, I didn't have any guest sets, obviously. Yeah. Because I wanted to do all the time. And, and, <laughs> so was Molly there on Thursday? Friday. Friday. Okay. She came Friday, saw the sets. Uh I think she saw first show. She might have stayed through second show. I forget. Yeah. Um but she was super nice about it. Yeah. And um She's so gorgeous. She's, she's like people. uniquely striking. You right. know, and she has style, like she also dresses herself well. Right. Some people, you know, 
they look good, but their clothes look like shit. That she's she puts it all together. Yes, in a way where I'm like, ah, she's like a I can't even version do this. Of this woman. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. There you mm-hmm. go. And um, Molly's not as funny as that woman. Uh, but then she doesn't do stand up. Yeah, she's not a comic. No, no, I know. Yeah, I not everyone is Jackie. Everyone is absolutely <laughs> everyone I know. And so it should be doing stand up comedy. It was uh, <laughs> Andy had some comment about uh, Joaquin Phoenix and the the veganism thing today mm-hmm. because one of his friends texted him and said that um, Joaquin Phoenix should get a humanitarian award, and Andy said that he, she should get. Uh, that he thought that Joaquin Phoenix should get a vegetarian award. <laughs> and then that's, that's funny. I thought it was very funny. And then uh, especially his, for a non comic. Right. And then his his uh vegan friend ignored how funny that was. Oh. And just sent back a lot of information about veganism. Oh my god. And then Andy he <laughs> texted her back and said, I'm here all week, by the way. <laughs> Try the veal. Oh man. Oh man. There's he the went line. one tag too far. It was a, uh, he, he went dark. He went dark. And uh, it was very funny. Mm. I, I, I just, I'm, I'm looking forward to all this work and it's good. It's but great. I just, uh, because the 45s, I have a joke. I have a freaking joke that is literally, I ju- you ever do a, do a bit and then find out that that's just the premise and it was working as a whole joke. Yes. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh shit, it needs punchlines. Yes. That's exactly what happened. I to don't me. understand why they stopped working though. Me neither. Thursday at it's work. Infuriating. Friday and Saturday, four shows. Did not work. Oh, by the way, I do this throwaway line about being living in Van Nuys mm-hmm. and how it's a helicopter test area. Right. But it turns out everyone can't stop thinking that Kobe Bryant died in a helicopter. Right. So I did it Thursday. And they, there was a weird reaction to it, but I kept powering through. Friday, I did it again, and they lost. They sort of all kind of grumble, grumble, kind of groaned a little bit. I, and did I you know that's why? I did. You just didn't know why it. it wasn't working. I didn't know why it wasn't working. So okay. Friday for a show, I figured out why it wasn't working. And I was just, I just said, I was like, "Do you guys think that I was doing a? I don't know anything about that person or his." I, I didn't, yeah, I couldn't. They thought you were making an a oblique Kobe. Kobe joke. Right. What a weird thing to have. Uh, what, Cause and, you'd go right into it. If you, if you, right. If I had a Kobe Bryant joke, you would hear it. And then I would say, who was he? And <laughs> it would be like that. I had a, I had a chunk about his, his rape charges. I gotta find it. It's somewhere on some old comic strip tapes I can put up or something. Oh, yeah. It was, uh, I guess I did read an article about, how it came out and how what had happened and how the in the settlement of of the charges and stuff so he yeah. didn't have to he he could deal with it civilly and not criminally mm-hmm. that he tried to make amends and he made and he wrote an apology and then he donated a bunch of money to a bunch of different pl- I mean I wonder like t- t- I've always felt like when guys do that that's who they are and that's who they'll always be but you know what? Maybe not. Maybe, Maybe not. he was a very pampered, not pampered, pampered, spoiled. Pa- I mean, a hard worker athlete, but a kid early on identified. But those athletes you're gonna, are pampered. But it, what yeah. I mean, but it's like, you're going to be a superstar. Yeah. So the rules don't apply to you, right? right? That's what you're told from, by your parents, by, you know, by yeah. everybody. By the time you're 11. Once you're identified, it's yeah. like the Soviet Union when they would find a gymnast yep. or something, right? So... So he he's he grows up thinking this, yep. believing this, and may have done that with other women who didn't pursue it criminally, right? And saw other guys getting away with it. And was right. like, I guess this is what I do. This is the spoils of war, right? Yep. The spoils of working really hard in basketball. And then he got caught, and it became public, and it was embarrassing and humiliating. And people said you could lose everything. And, and he was like, oh, I can't do it. Okay, this noted. Is, this is wrong. I don't know. Right. There is, there can be remorse. There can be yeah. actual uh, guilt and amends and, and, and trying to be a better person from that point on. I mean, that's why anger management classes exist, mm-hmm. right? And so that, and, the, and it's, it's so that people learn to deal with their rage and learn to deal with their, and, Who's who is saying? Oh, I know. 
someone who worked in the prison system. I was talking to this woman. Um, she was on that Joko cruise that I went on, that nerd mm-hmm. cruise. And so I see her around sometimes. And she was, she works in the prison system. And uh, some of the men that, uh, she works with are murderers. Jesus. And they are being punished for murdering. Right. And she said, there's no one. They actually have, they've sort of let go of the guilt of it because they're being punished for it. They're like, they can go, okay, I'm paying society back for this crime. Right, right. And so hopefully I don't do this ever again. Yeah. And I can become a different person, but I did this one thing and now I'm being punished for it and then I can let it go. Interesting. It was kind of fascinating. Yeah. Um, murder anyone I love and you shouldn't let it go. <laughs> By the way, you should feel oh. like shit and guilt. Oh, forever. For the rest of your life. Yeah. For the rest of your life. Yeah. 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 No forgiveness. I don't believe in forgiveness. No, no. I th- it's a, it's a classic, uh, well played. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a nice sort of Irish Catholic moment I'm seeing right here. Just full of really? rage. <laughs> Jackie, where how are much we at? time have we done? Yeah, it's a good question. You see? We're at 53 minutes. Oh, we have seven right. more minutes. You, uh, so you're, so I'm in well, a funk, you're in a funk, but I'm but excited to be out of my funk because I'll be out of it for a week and a half. I'll be on the road. I'll be childless. Right. Uh, my son's father's going to take care of my son for that week. I'm in Minneapolis okay. and, um, I'm excited to just, ho- I, at least at night get work done. Yeah. I don't know if I'll be able to do what I have to do. And if I can't, during the day, are you going to bring all the, the audio? I mean, yeah, they're on it in a Dropbox. Okay. If I can't do it, then I will have to contact someone and go, you have to help me do this for me. I can't yeah. do it, but I would, I would like to pick, you know, Marianne Ways told me, uh, cause I was like, I would like to know the name of the person who edited my do- do- two dope Queens. Mm. Because whoever did it uh, tightened up those jokes and really uh, made me appear geniusly, uh, quite honestly. <laughs> and she told me, it was a woman, cool. woman editor. Cool. And she told me that woman's name. And one day I will have that at my fingertips and we will celebrate that person. That okay. is not this time, unfortunately. Cannot be discovered in the next seven minutes. But if people get a chance to see my two dope queens uh, on HBO, uh-huh. let know in your heart. That it was like a 12 minute set and the woman who edited it down to like nine, nine thirty. She cinched it up. Yep. Nice. She sucked all the air out of it, tightened mm-hmm. it up gloriously. And, um, I look pretty good, you know? Yeah. And I sound great. Uh, those jokes, I was like, I listened to that set a couple of times. I'm like, yeah, that's a better way to put that. <laughs> uh, without all that weird shit in the middle. <laughs> can I, can I, I'm still doing the, uh, the best of stand up on Conan yeah. podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I ha- just noticed we did the year 2012 when I did my first Conan. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't on the list. <laughs> Why would, uh, my, what, believe me, did that 2016, I better be on that fucking list. So it's interesting. Um, who's picking the, the, the comments? I don't know. I'm not sure. It's uh, you should find out and submit yourself. No, because I don't want to be angry at somebody. I want to be angry at everybody and not <laughs> not anyone in particular. <laughs> I need to write that. I need down. to spread it out. I don't Otherwise, I'll be enraged and okay. insulted. Mm-hmm. Um, well, but it's I've been listening to a lot of stand up because I listen to all the sets and I just uh, give a little heads up to things to listen to. I tell people when I think the audience sucks. There was someone said. I forget who it was just, I just recorded this, these last couple podcasts, uh, last week and somebody said from like 2007 or 2008, just okay. had one of those women in the audiences goes, Oh, Oh, fuck, fuck those people. Oh yeah. Just on premises. Just, you know, yeah. Yeah. Just wait. My cat died. That- that's oh, it, it didn't fucking die. I don't have a cat. It's a joke. <laughs> Stop right. it. If you give this at least two more beats, yeah. uh, you will know that things are fine. Yeah. Oh, God, that's so brutal. I hate that. It's very annoying. It's genuinely maddening. Yeah. Yeah, that's nobody's, that's never the comic's fault. That's, and I don't know how to explain to audience members that groaning and, and being sad about premises is not helpful. It's not. Stop, yeah. stop, uh, like you have one job. Just <laughs> shut the fuck up and listen. You don't need to commiserate with me on yes. lies I'm telling you. Oh, they're God. not true. 
last show Saturday. Yeah. I'm uh there's a guy in the audience from Wisconsin who's hammered beyond redemption. And uh and he keeps you know, premises come up and he shouts out to his buddies uh some commentary about I saw that no, or <laughs> No. What do you mean I, I saw that? Like he you saw your like, show before? Like, no, he's like uh someone might mention a TV show. Oh, okay. Or whatever the premise is gotcha, is like gotcha. I had a dog. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, dude. And I said I was from Wisconsin and he said something like yeah, did you know you ever go to Kowalski's? And, oh my uh, God. <laughs> I said, oh my Sir, God. We can't uh, do this. Um, <laughs> we could talk afterwards. You could buy all of my merch. You'd have to really be quiet. And then sadly, uh, the timing was slightly off, but the, the door guy, bless, I mean, bless his heart. I love it. I love it when a door guy swoops in. Uh huh. And he swooped in, but he swooped in so early, I was still sort of talking to the guy. Right. And I had to turn away and do my next minute and a half because I heard him talking to the dude sitting there. And the dude yeah. sitting there is like, what? No, I'm not doing. What did he? He said, because, and, and the kid, the door kid was like, Sir, if you, I'm gonna, uh, you can't actually talk to the comics. Uh, I will have to ask you to leave. And he's like, I can't talk. To, and, and, and so he was trying to have a conversation with the door guy in the door. I was like, yeah, I just told you what just happened right there. And then he backed up, so, like he faded into the hedge row, like, uh, <laughs> like the Simpsons. In the Simpsons, yeah. Yeah. And it was perfect. Oh. So, uh, so his dismount was perfect, but, uh, but he, he jumped in a little too soon, but there's nothing to be done. I was psyched. I was just psyched that he was there. There's no troubleshooting drunk people, you right. know, like it's just, it's a crapshoot. It's crapshoot, um, but I did ever since Zanies. I've been slightly twitchy about the audience. So, oh, I um, see. Yeah, so I was psyched that he was there. Yeah, and 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 actively. On I board. think you're safe in San Francisco from Nazis. Yeah, yeah, I'm safe uh, from uh, from from. You might not be safe from audience. libertarians. It's right. turning into a tech bro town. Sure. Yeah, I had. Uh, I mean, it is one, but I mean politically as well. Right. Which is a little weird. Yeah, everything changes, Jackie. It's true. Olaf sang about it in Frozen Two. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we at? Oh my God! What? Thirty more seconds. What? That would have been a great last line. God damn it! So close. Why do, why do we always fuck this up? Where's Kyle? Where is Kyle? Ky oh, you know what he's doing? This is rad. Oh yeah, he's doing his podcast. Yeah, uh, Mondays are hard for him to tape. Yeah, he's got. Uh, he only has three other jobs. That's the thing about Kyle Clark. I get it. He's as, just like us. As soon as I put this mic down, I'm headed right into bed. That's because you have to go to work tomorrow. Or I'll right? stop by the kitchen. One of those two things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Come to our shows. Maximumfun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported.